Would you welcome to the show the Brisbane Broncos captain Adam Reynolds? Welcome, Reno. Thank you. Is he? There's Cohen riding a horse, 115 kilo Cohen, bending over and picking up a carcass. You've got to be little and strong. Adam Reynolds. He's got little guy. arms, Billy. Now, sometimes an injury isn't a curse. Remember Nathan a couple of years ago? <coughs> Freshened you up. Mm. Nathan gets a bigger run into origin. This is the maddest place on the planet. <laughs> Dancing. The only show where you're allowed to do it without shoes. Andrew Jones, one of the greatest players of all time. Cuddles and kisses go a long way, especially when you're in trouble. Oh, the horse has bolted. Look at the big fellow go in. Imagine if he wanted to fire. <laughs> They're very horny and very aggressive. Are we allowed to put that to air? Sydney, stay classy. I love everyone. They're making me feel this good. Welcome to Freddie and the Eights for another week. Easter weekend coming up, which means there is five days of footy and plenty of chocolate to eat to get you through it as well. Great to have your company. Plenty to talk about on the show today with these gentlemen, Andrew Johns and Brad Fittler. Welcome. Matthew. Now, just I'm just thinking, what is the biblical thing at Easter? This is when... Um, you don't eat meat on yeah, Sunday. What happened? You don't eat meat Friday. What happened in biblical times? Jesus was Jesus. crucified at Easter time. He died and then he came back but, Monday. So on fr Thursday or Friday? Good Friday. Friday. And then he, he comes he was, back. Yeah, he was persecuted or not persecuted. He was on the cross oh, and then he... he Monday he came back. Yeah. No, that's... No, Easter Sunday he came back. Come back. Oh, well, look Monday, at us. Then? How bad are what's we? It's a public holiday. Yeah, so what happened on Monday? You'd have to talk to the Reverend Bill Cruz. Okay. But um, I, I think that's generally the story. <laughs> <laughs> Biblical scriptures here on Fred in the Eighth. Uh, on the show today, more mascots. A very popular uh, response to our very weird-looking mascots last week. Might even involve a knight this week. Injury chaos. They're saying nearly twenty million dollars worth of NRL talent on the sidelines at the moment. Penrith versus Roosters. Roosters versus Penrith. Should we call it the Brad Fittler Cup? I think so. No. We've got enough cups. That'd be nice. And we'll preview all the games as well. Last week, some of the cursed mascots of the game were centre stage. We've gone further into the archives and we've found a banned Newcastle Knight mascot. I haven't seen this. I'm curious. What is this? But there'll be no sideline galloping from Rocky, the Knight's four-legged mascot. Rocky was also banned from the 97 grand final when it was feared Manly fans would throw things at him. Now officials are worried the Easter show veteran could be spooked by the fireworks. As was the case four years ago, Rocky's friends are getting hot under the collar. Clinton Fletcher, National 9 News. It's one of Andrew John's off-casts off for great, the racehorses. That is one of the great news pieces on yeah, TV. Yeah, Clinton, well done. That, um, that horse and the jockey, it was a steward at the trots. Right. And had the horses at yep. the trots that get the wayward ones. Mm -hmm. Good fella. You know, uh, remember Ginger's mate Cocky? Yeah. So I'm pretty sure it was Cocky that they, uh, James and that, he lost a bet and they made him be the mascot for half a game. <laughs> the rooster's mascot. <laughs> now, horses, obviously uh, very lovely animals most of the time, but not without danger. Here's a horse mascot fail for you. Oh, yeah. <laughs> In fact, that looks a bit like the horse I backed on Saturday at the Newcastle Trots. <laughs> Bang. Oh. Wasn't there another bit of animal carnage somewhere at a... It's going a bit fast here, aren't they? Jeez. <laughs> it's not great driving, I've got to say. And in America, they don't like to sue people. No way. <laughs> no, that's right. Litigation. Won't. Play on. None. Play on. Can you imagine the, the young lady who rolled, she would turn up, neck brace. It's like that, remember Robert De Niro off Cape Fear? <laughs> when the lawyer gives him a clip and he goes to court. Anyway, hello De Niro. He's a big, yeah. big he loves, fan. He loves this show. Loves this show. Hey, Robert. Boys, all the injuries this weekend. I'm going to put it to you. Tino gone for the season. Titans, done. Yep. Gone. Gone. They struggle when he's off the field and when he's playing, when he has a breather on the bench. Well, they struggle when he's on the field. <laughs> it's true. That's no, true. They, haven't, they haven't struck a blow. I remember 
Joey got me all excited at the start of the year. You're a Titans fan, oh, 100%. You? I thought they'd be around the eight. With Des going there, or younger players, their forward pack on paper, they haven't fired a shot. You can't describe how much of a loss he is. It's huge. Mm. And for Queensland. Yeah, they've lost a few Queensland at the moment. Well, Reese Walsh has got that eye. You've got Munster well, with back. the groin. Joy Arrow. Joy um... Arrow is another one. We don't know about Arrow, do we? He's like an indefinite He's like situation. a four to six weeks and they're going to Munster's see if they in... can rehab it. Munster's Munster the groin. Indefinite. Lindsay Collins, Hammy. See, that's a very forlorn looking uh, Tino. I could imagine Des is thinking, what's happening here? Yuck. What, uh, we have medicabs? Yeah, didn't yeah why didn't he get a ride off the... I didn't think it was that bad. He sort of right. limped off. Now, the other one, Mitchell Moses. They're saying round 12. That's a long time on the sideline. If they... They could be out of touch by the time he gets back. I think they've got a tough draw too the next 10 or 12 weeks, haven't they? They play a lot of the top teams. Hmm. So Brown to seven. I suppose he owes them after last year. Well, it's a big opportunity for Dylan. And Blaze. And he Blaze did, to a lung. Did a good job I'm last I'm surprised week. Ethan Th Sanders didn't get a start. Yeah, maybe he, but, you know, he sits in there and starts training with them, working with them. Maybe they get to use him. At the moment, they've got no outside backs. All their outside backs are in. I don't know who's on the extended bench of their outside backs that's not playing at the moment. For Parramatta? When does Simonson come? Bailey Simonson's in the extended squad this week. Oh, is he? Yeah. So, all right. There's a bit well, of depth there. To, there's talk that Lomax will be there. Zach Lomax. Really? Yeah. This here's, year. here's the list, boys. Run your, run your eye over the list. Now, we've already we've spoken about uh, the huge hole that Tino leaves. Look, if, some of these are long-term. Some of these we aren't quite sure. Nathan Cleary will be back after the bye. So, I think that's round eight. So, that, that he misses two games which isn't a yeah. bad outcome. But Jason Saab, he was a four to six week scenario. Walsh, four to six weeks. Uh, Munster, but we don't know about Munster. Indefinite. That's got to be a worry. Indefinite. Mm. Mm. Cohen Hess. Season. Yeah. Gone. It's a tough game. You need depth. Mm. But this season injury list of that size this early in the year is not very common. Yeah. It goes in cycles. Yeah, I think so too. I've seen... Yeah, I don't. I don't think it's any different to any others. Biggest loss amongst all those. Biggest loss, Walsh. Walsh. Well, no, Tina. that's the way they they do all right. They still win, mate. They Tina. Just win. Tina. I mean, yeah. Walsh. I, 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 six can, weeks. I cannot be back. believe there's noises coming out saying he should have been suspended for that. It was an accident. I'd be happy with a fine. And then the other one for me was Leo Thompson. He's competing for the ball. He's looking at the ball. Pappenhausen jumps six foot in the air. And that's where it happens. It's an accident. Pe players compete on every play. Accidents are going to happen. I don't agree with that one. I think if you're coming on someone's blind side, you have sole responsibility. Okay. So if Tail and May, as people, as the referee said, you've got to bend your back. He can, he'll knock himself out or, God forbid, he'll break his neck. Well, you've got a better chance. But every centre and winger in the game, as soon as you see those sweep lines, especially when you've got Reese Walsh, Teddy, Turbo, well, the list goes on, they've got to jam. And when they jam, they've got to go hard. Because if they're a fraction of a yeah. second late, they go boom and they get you. Still don't care. You can't touch their head. Jam as much as you like, as hard as you like, you can't touch their head. Accident. Look how Thompson one's got me baffled. Where he's competing for the ball. He's looking at the ball. And then Pappenhausen gets in. A, it looks spectacular or dangerous. Didn't it look spectacular? What happens if oh Pappenhausen goes up? When he goes up and Leo's looking at the ball, and Pappenhausen's knee goes, doosh. Mm. Behind his ear, knocks Leo out. Is Pappenhausen at fault there? Mm. It seems like the defender is always the one who has to have the duty of care. Yeah. So the defender always has. Well, it is because... Uh... I think that's just the way the game is because when you're attacking, you've got the focus of the ball. When you're defending, you're sort of coming in to close the ball down in the play. You have more time, I suppose. There was a bit of talk that Mitch Moses mm. might have played alongside Nathan in the Origin team. That looks like it probably won't happen now because of Mitch's situation. I know we're a fair way out from Origin. Well, like Joey said, around that. we were speaking about this before, that you know, for a club, a good time to be injured. You know, sometimes an injury isn't a curse. Remember Nathan a couple of years ago? 
Fresh, <laughs> fresh and Juwan. Mm. You know, they come back. You know, Nathan gets a bigger run into Origin. Mitchell will have, what, three weeks? Round 15 is at Origin normally? No. No, Origin comes about in June, isn't it? It's 70 out. days away now. Doesn't, it's doesn't, doesn't feel There's that. It's 10 weeks and we're also round 13. Mm. See, I'm, st I'm still a huge Cody fan. Massive Cody fan. Uh, but he's got to show something before Origin. But if I, you know, if I had to put one in, if someone said to me, right, oh, you've got to pick someone now at 5'8", I'd go Cody because he unlocks players on that left side. Uh, obviously, I'd, Moses would be... I'm, this is if Moses is out, but he's got to show. He's got to show something before then, Cody. Do you think the Panthers... They're going to win some games. That's what I'm saying. Well, you've just said that they're not going to win a game for about four weeks. So if they get beat by dogs, they've also then got who they got? They've got Mate, Penrith. This is a conversation we had off Melbourne, air. yeah, I know. It's just off air conversation. I don't know. Oh, breaching confidences. Okay. So <laughs> we never do that dogs. on this show. Who'd you tip out of the dogs and South? Dogs. I've gone dogs too. Yeah. Okay, then the next week they go Warriors, then they go Sharks. Is Warriors away or home? Well, it doesn't really matter. Oh, the Warriors anyway. perform anyway. Sharks are hard, uh, yep. Then they go by. Then they go Storm away and Penrith. Mate, the way they played the other night, they wouldn't beat anyone. Mm. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm just looking at the draw there. Yeah. They've got to win this week. Hey, um, just with, week. with the Cleary thing too, do you reckon they would have thought about Luai to halfback? Well, and Dane Laurie into 5 8 because Brad Schneider's come in. Every year they've I had... I saw him play lower grade the other week. He was good. It was too good for him. They've had a backup halfback every year. Yeah. So they had... Um, okay. Well, they had Cogger last year. They had Sean O'Sullivan at one stage. Tyler they had... Taylor uh, May was in and around there. Who was the one? Was there one between Sean O'Sullivan and... Cogger. No, uh, Cogger, Cogger took over from O'Sullivan. Did he? Yeah. And now Schneider, who came up from Canberra. That's good sort of play. their recipe, isn't it? Sort of cut and paste. Keep he's everything a good player. the same. And you watch him play, he's a bit like Fo Fogarty, where the, you know, he just directs them around. He's good at that. He's too good for him in the next grade. All right. Fascinating to see how he slots in there. Uh, we've got a very big name guest. We've blown the budget for this guest coming up after the break, but on the way there. We caught up with the Broncos in the preseason and we asked them who gave Kevy the biggest headaches. Yeah, inside. <laughs> nah, Walshy. Oh, yeah, Walshy's Walshy, punish. hands down, punish. Walshy just revolves the whole game plan around himself yeah. every day. So, even defence, <laughs> and he never gets in the line, so. If he's wrong, he's always right. Yeah. He's right. Mate, no. be honest. No. Be honest. Not you. Me. Not me. Him. He dancing, clowning around. You should ask our gym coach. Nothing. He doesn't exactly. train. What? He complains, bro. He I complains. missed one session yesterday. My first session missed. Whole preseason. This week. You're welcome. Corey Oates. Yeah, Gary. <laughs> Corey Oates. <laughs> oh, he'd give us a headache. He's annoying, bro. Oh, uh, yes, like uh, peas in the pod. Well, talk about big name guests, ladies and gentlemen. Would you welcome to the show the Brisbane Broncos, Captain Adam Reynolds? Welcome, Reno. Thank you. Great to talk to you, mate. Who is the most annoying? Uh, to the players, probably Corey Oates, hands down. Uh, but to the coaches, definitely Walshy. Yeah. He's um, like a bull of a gate with everything. So, got to calm him down and, um, yeah, hands down, Walshy. He looks pretty talented. What's he like watching a training? Yeah, he's a student of the game. He, he really thinks hard about, um, you know, certain plays, how we can break defences down. Um, you know, he watches a lot of video. He always comes to me with ideas and ways to improve sort of our attack. Um, and that's something that I, I love about Walsh. He's a competitor and, um, you know, always looking for an edge to, to always get better. What about when he makes an error? He seems to walk away from an error pretty easy. That must come in handy in big games. Yeah, it does. Uh, and we encourage him to obviously keep playing football. We don't want him to, to go into a shell. And, um, you know, that's sort of where I can step in and help him out. Um, if he makes one or two errors, just to, you know, get behind him, give him a bit more confidence. We don't want him making, you know, four or five errors a game. Obviously, we want to cut that out as much as possible. But we also don't want him to go into his shell and, um, you know, not play his brand of football. He's an important part of our team. And... Uh, we want him touching the ball uh, as much times as possible. Clunky start to the year for you guys. Injuries obviously playing a huge part. Out of 10, how would you rate the team's performance the opening three rounds? 
Yeah, probably a five, Joey. We're, we're not really happy with, obviously, the form that we've shown. Um, you know, we've won one game um, against the South Sydney team that probably weren't at their best or anywhere near their best. Um, you know, we hung in the first round there. We uh, sort of didn't play our brand of football. And then, obviously, going down to Penrith uh, was pretty disappointing. We started pretty well in that game. Obviously, lost Reese Walsh was was hard to, um, you know, manoeuvre players around and put them out of position. But, um, you know, we showed character. We showed a bit of fight there in the first half. Um, but ultimately, not good enough in the end. Obviously, falling away and leaking too many points. So, uh, another big challenge for us this weekend, coming up against uh, the Cowboys, undefeated Cowboys. How was your pre-season, mate? A lot of people were asking about, given the enormity of last year, not only the fact you got to the grand final, but the style in which your team plays, it's, you know, it's pretty extravagant. It's wonderful to watch. What was your pre-season like, you know? How much was based on, you know, tough training, getting your head around, uh, going one better, and also then just, you know, obviously getting through the months of uh, the process and the programs? Uh, I think it was a bit of an easier pre-season, to be honest. Um, look, we, we started a bit later, so, um, you know, we got the t tough stuff done pretty early on in, in December. Um, but most of us are only back for, you know, four or five weeks maximum before Christmas. Um, so we got a, a fair bit of tough stuff done there, but uh, it was an enjoyable one, obviously. Had the heartbreak of last year, and uh, you obviously want to get better and improve, but, uh, you know, most of the boys come back in in good shape. Um, you know, a lot of the boys ran a PB in their testing or came back strong. Um, so a lot of the boys have done a lot of work in the off-season to make sure we came back in better shape. Your knee, Renard, is it chronic? Is it going to get better? Are you going to have to manage it? You've just re-signed, haven't you, for another extended for another year. Is this something you're going to have to carry for the rest of your career? No, I picked it up in round one over in Vegas there. Um, it was only a low-grade strain MCL. Um, came back, obviously had the week off uh, with the competition starting that week later. Uh, gave it a bit of time to heal and unfortunately sort of went over it again on uh, in round two against the Bunnies. So I thought I'd give it another week off and uh, the medical team have done a fantastic job working around the hours to sort of get that right. And uh, they've spent a lot of time with me behind the scenes. So knees feeling good, ready to go this week and um, hopefully put in a great performance. You didn't slip, in the, uh, slip on the dance floor in the nightclub in Vegas. <laughs> No, I can't dance, mate, so uh, I was sitting down at the bar. No dancing for me. Yeah, you slipped over your uh, your stack of casino chips, perhaps. <laughs> We're all great admirers of Ezra Mam, Adam, as, as the halves partner to him. Where might he end up in his career? Because he is a freakish talent. Yeah, he's sort of in that similar mould to Reese Walsh. Um, you know, an instinctive player, backs himself. Uh, he's so strong for a small fella. Um, he's quick. Um, he sees himself as a long-term uh, game manager. He wants to get in the seven um, when I retire. And, uh, you know, he's continually asking questions just similar to Walsh. He wants to learn the game and um, be upskilled. And um, obviously, we, we want to see that instinctive side of him, you know, get him the ball in his hands and try and get him some open space because that's when he's at his best. And no doubt he'll, he'll learn the trade of, uh, you know, the managing side of the games in the, in the, you know, the near future. <laughs> Mate, we constantly talk about, at the moment, um, you know, the size of our players. And I spoke before to Joe and we are talking about how actually the two smallest players are the captains on the weekend. You've got uh, someone like Finney Fuiaki running at you on the weekend. How, how would you give advice to a young bloke, you know, and how, how you actually go into that game mentally, you know, obviously trying to take time away from him. What's your process and how would you do it? How would you give advice to young people in a big man's game? Oh, I think you've got to have the mindset of going in. It's going to be tough. Um, you know, get some reps throughout the week with some bigger bodies. Um, certainly don't shy away from the contact. I like to obviously take time off them, so try and get up meet them. Uh, be Try and be as physical as you can with them and try and win the collision. They're big boys. We know, uh, you know, it's going to be a bit tough on the weekend, but... Um, if you prepare for it mentally, um, you know, physically, you go in ready to be at your best and um, no doubt you'll get some help along the way. But, um, you know, you try and get some confidence through the week with some bigger bodies. Um, yeah, you just got to do your best. But, uh, you know, the, the work throughout the preseason you do uh, defensively obviously sets you up for these big games. Well, it's a clash that stands alone amongst the Queensland teams, isn't it? Brisbane versus North Queensland goes back... Uh, 
10 years, even longer than that. And now it's even uh, more significant because we're playing for the Carl Webb medal and obviously the late Carl Webb, a giant of Queensland Rugby League. Yeah, it's a, a terrific... Uh, it's an honour, obviously, to play in his name. Um, I was fortunate enough to meet Carl late in his life and to see the impact he has around our club. I know he's a, a legend of both our club and, and the Cowboys. Uh, with a short stint there in, at, at Parramatta, um, you know, you only got to talk to a few of the older boys about the impact he had, not only on the field, but off the field. Oh, um, you know, speaks by him of the man himself. And, um, yeah, just grateful and lucky enough that I got to spend some time with him. And it'll be a great weekend, um, you know, to, to honour his legacy. Rene, you were born in Redfern, born and bred. Um, you moved to Brisbane. How long ago was that? A couple of years? Three, three years? You've been up there three years now? Uh, two years. Second year. I think yes, I've, I've asked you this before. Yeah, yeah. Do, you, do you see yourself moving back to Sydney? No, no, we're pretty comfortable up here in Queensland. Um, <laughs> it's a great place to obviously bring up some kids. Um, you know, pretty fortunate that we got welcomed into the club how, how I have, and not only me, but the family. It's been a pretty easy transition. Uh, it's, it's great most times of the year, barring origin period. <laughs> There's a bit of lunatics to get around up here, but um, no, I certainly love the club, love the area. Um, and it, it's home for us now. Well, as we say about Queensland, beautiful one day, footy the next. Great to talk to you, mate. All the best. Have a good game Friday night. Right, it's going to be a cracker. Thanks, guys. Appreciate it. Adam Reynolds, and you'll see it all here live and free on nine. Thursday, footy, two games on Good Friday. It's interesting about Ezra Mam. Wants to eventually be a halfback. Good stuff. Ambitious. Looking forward to see how he goes the rest of the year, Ezra. Taking more responsibility. Tough start of the year. The distractions and everything that went around. Obviously, that stuff, Las yeah. Vegas, that, you know, that sort of wears, that wears on you. I just want to see him play good. I love watching him play. Having Payne Haas, that doesn't help either. And the other bloke, Pia Cura. <clears throat> Jeez, yeah. He's been a sensation. He's so who they got playing back row? Ricky's on one side Jayden still. Jaden Hunt. Jaden Hunt. Dragon. First game for Brisbane this week. Right, good luck. Big clash. Broncos-Cowboys always is. Freddie and the eighth games. <laughs> Afghan goat basketball. <laughs> the sport originated when nomadic tribes spread across uh, Asia between the 10th and 15th centuries. I've seen, I've seen this before on SBS. Buzkashi oh. is oh. Afghans. Oh. Uh, the Afghanistan oh, national yeah, sport man. is often played on Fridays they whack them, after they, yeah. a long week oh, in the yeah. office. They whack them over the... Yeah, they pick them up and whack them over the... So is that an animal? Oh, hang on. What's he put it? It's a goat. Oh, it's a dead goat. Yeah. No, surely they're not holding a goat like that. That is that. a it's dead a fake, goat. It's a fake goat. It's how actually, would you, no, how no, could you just pick up a goat like a goat. that? It's actually sponsored by the RSPCA this, uh, this year. <laughs> Look at the crowd. So, oh, what, why, got why, cleaned up there. Why, why would they use a dead goat? I mean, there's any, any number of things you could Mate, use other than a dead goat. How could someone, and they look like little dudes, yeah. sweep down and pick up a dead goat? Like, right. surely. Here are the rules. The ball is a headless goat carcass. The objective is to get the carcass into a hole or a basket. Other versions get the goat around a flag or into a goal area. Two teams of around 10 on horseback. Um, the field <laughs> can be in an open paddock or marked field for official competitions, often 200 metres or 400 metres long. Like, seriously, what are the lines for? What do you reckon the lines come into play? Probably not at all. Yeah, zero. Wow. You know everyone's got a saying. What about the defence? Oh. oh, he's off. Oh, look at that. You know everyone's got a saying for things. Like, I'm ha you're happy as Larry or you're this. Yeah. Or that. I had a mate and he's, he's, one of his things is, I'm as horny as an old goat. What does that mean? I like the one as rare as rocking horse shit. <laughs> I'm as horny as an old goat. I wonder if he's been watching that Afghan thing. I don't think he's been saying. So he's a Roman sandal? Yeah. After having llamas, <laughs> they're very toey. Mate, they're, they're pretty hardcore, <laughs> the Afghans. Now, um, <laughs> no fear. for some reason, I've, we've got to identify a player that would dominate each of our nominees for the Fred in the Eighth. Oh, games. Billy Slater. <laughs> Billy, Billy Slater. Slater. Mate, he's mad. Have you seen him on a horse? No. He's mad. Yeah, but introducing a headless goat carcass might bring him he undone. <laughs> Mate, he'd be, he'd, he'd be good at that. He'd have to have long arms. Uh, Cohen Hess. Is Cohen Hess 
Is he? There's Cohen riding a horse, 115 kilo Cohen, bending over and picking up a carcass. You've got to be little and strong. Adam Reynolds. He's got little good. arms, Billy. You've got long arms. Mate, he plays polo. That's their go. Well, the troll's got a farm. Does he ride, are they motorbikes or does he ride horses? He's on motorbikes. So he's he'd on be motorbikes. Because he's, his arms are the. You know what? There was. We've, in the NRL, we've had, I think it might be only one Afghan player, which is Omar Slimenkel. Slimenkel, yeah. So Omar, Omar was a refugee to New Zealand. Mm. I remember he, him playing. Yeah, he won a, the, a cracking block. He's Afghan. He won the really? block. He's Afghan. Yeah, I've actually spoken to him a few times about going to Afghans, Afghanistan with the Red Cross and doing some stuff over there. So I've always wanted to go. I read the Kite Runner. You could go in there. Can you ride a horse? No. He's owned a few. No. You know. Uh, he, anyway, o Omar, you're getting back. He was an incredible athlete. Yeah. He ended up coming to the Roosters, I think. Mate, he won the block. You know that. What? He went on the block and won the block. On Channel 9? On Channel 9. Did he? I don't know. How would I know? I'm sure it's him. You, he would no, he's, know. So Omar is the only Af Afghan person to play rugby league. Well, that doesn't surprise me because it's an not really... He was an incredible It's not a national sport in Afghanistan yeah. because that, the Afghan... No, but horse basketball is a national sport. Naturally, there's obviously great athletes, but they are tough. Imagine how resilient Omar people did are win the block. He won the block. Omar. What you know, they did, the, they did acreages. Because I loved it. I loved the block. He did acreages, him and his mate. Right. And they killed it. They did a great job. He'd be good on that. He's, he's very good. Like, watching the way, obviously, you need, obviously, to be able to build and do all that. But, like, you need to an element of being able to design and have some taste. He was awesome. You go very good on the block with all the work you've done. If I did it with my wife, we would there would be carnies. Well, but isn't that the whole point? Like it's a test of a relationship as well. There's no way in the world me and the wife could go on it. Well, if there was drama, you could go and see John Aitken from Maths. Because John Aitken <laughs> has been in and amongst the NRL on nine team in recent days and he offered some counselling to one of the odd couples of our wide world of sports team. Why do you want to fight everyone? People want to come Everything's got to be a fight. No, it's not. I'll stick up for myself. Everyone's got to be... Why can't People you just say you're wrong? I'm sorry. I'm, I'm not moving. sorry. I'm not sorry I'm wrong because I'm paid right. to have an opinion and I've had an opinion. All right, you two. Look, for the sake of this relationship, you two are going to have to start accepting some of your mistakes. But hang on, I've, I've done nothing wrong. Gus, no. is there anything? No. Well, look, Paul, I've got to say it. You've got to stop this blaming. But it's his fault. Anything, Gus? Well, look, what I'm seeing here is a classic case of gridlock. No one's conceding. All you're doing is point scoring. And it's got to stop. What I need now is a decision. What's it going to be? <laughs> Very good. What with you, grumble bum? He's not a fan. Not a fan. We went to do one. Ours wasn't like that. Oh, did you do one? Yeah. Did you have a session with John We Aiken? had a session, yeah. You, your relationships go quite well. So you know what? Andrew's scarred by all the cats time he's had over the years. Um, Friday footy, rabbits, bulldogs. How interesting is this game? It's one of the great days on the footy calendar, good Friday footy. So yeah. we'll have action at 4 o'clock. And that game's out at uh, City back. Olympic Park getting, and then at Suncorp on Friday getting evening. Getting back to good Friday... When can't we have meat? Friday. Mate. I, know, I went to it. I'm Catholic. I went Friday. to Friday. Well, he doesn't even... Look, like, this is not the first Easter you've had. Haven't yeah, you worked this out yet? Just... It's like every, every week we're at the footy, he goes, what time are we on air? It's been 7.30 for the last 25 years. Friday. Meat. No, no, no meat. No meat on Friday. But are you a seafood lover, Joey? Yeah. You can have fish. With that. You can have fish. It gets trying for me because I don't have, like seafood. Have you ever eat, eaten meat? I think subconscious, like, out of accident more than anything. Like, it's not hard. Some people love not Good hard. Friday because they're just seafood 
feet. Yeah. I think I have for accident, but when I'm conscious, I don't. Well, you're vegan. Or you when were vegan. Veg when you're veg you wouldn't have had a problem. That was good when I was 90 kilo. Yeah, you did. You look, you look like you're on maths with a little bit of, a bit of plastic surgery work. Honestly. It's been, uh, Why are we involved with that? What? You know, it's, it's you the like highest maths. rating show in Australia. Don't care. Don't care. Imagine if they put your relationships through the ringer like that. It'd be entertaining. It'd be entertaining. Put some tears. How would Kate go? Oh, she'd, oh, have you. Yeah. she'd love to embrace her emotions in an open environment like that, wouldn't she? Um, Rabbits Bulldogs has been a traditional Just Good Friday game for many, yeah. many years. So they get married, these people. Yeah. They get married. Has any of them stayed together? A few yeah. of them. What, so they've actually stayed together? Yeah, there are there are rare rare cases where that happens. Yes. Normally once a year you get a couple yeah. that stay together. I just I mean this is a this is a bit of a rogue rogue year this year. There's not too many of them have that much in common. See, I, I my wife watches it religiously, and I kind of sit there and have had to pay attention. I don't and mind. And I've kind of been I've I been swept up in the bit. fever. Yeah. Yeah. See this. <laughs> There was one girl on there that show. during the show, she went back to her old boyfriend. Is that right? Yep. Yep. <laughs> yep. Is this like an offshoot? Trust of... might be hard in that relationship. This has been on for a long time. Is this show. like an offshoot of uh, Farmer Wants a Wife? No. Or the other top one, Naguama Wants a Wife? <laughs> Wes. I used to say to Wes all the time. Love that show you're on. Naguama Wants a Wife. <laughs> Wes <laughs> well, I used to say to Wes all the time. Baby, you can drive my car. Remember, he got banned for like six <laughs> years from driving. <laughs> uh, good Friday. Hey, now, this, remember this? Oh, this yeah. Is, this, yeah. What's this one? Is this the 2015 one? Where this is the finger pump. Oh. Oh, this is... Oh, yes, yes, yes. Oh. oh. And what happened was oh. he got the penalty. That's he got awful. the penalty in front of the goalpost. Because he was going for a goal, they didn't know where it was going to land. He goes directly and gets a penalty in front of the goalpost. Oh, that's right. They went bananas, didn't Flemmer they? Flemmer got Simbin. They, everyone got Simbin. He sent them all off. Adam Reynolds kicked the goal, win the game. There was a controversy back then, wasn't it? Mm. That's when James Graham was doing the point with the... Because he got in trouble for pointing at the referee, so he started to point with his nose. That's right, he did too. <laughs> the big red machine. 2014, Trent Hawkins and field goal. Nice he was a great player under pressure, Trent Hawkins, wasn't he? Can he can nail a kick. Well, he's a calm dude. We never talked to him. He's, he's a relaxed person. Okay, 2018, he, Good a Friday. Here's South... a trivia, trivia oh. question. Who was Trent Hawkins' last game for in the NRL? In the NRL? Uh, he went and played... Manly? For... Oh, Newcastle. Newcastle. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, he had a season up there. Sometimes you hit uh, ex-players and you see... Like Chris Hinington, for instance. He finished his career at Newcastle. He did yep. too. Craig Gower. He did too. That's right. Willie? Oh, no, yep. he didn't finish there. He went up to the Cowboys, didn't he, after that? Uh, Dad's army back then for Newcastle. Yeah. Hey, uh, South's two tries in the final seven minutes, 2018. Adam Dewey. It's not Dewey, is it? Well, Dewey. Actually, another... Random question. Who scored the try when New South Wales won the Origin in 2014? Trent Hawkinson. Trent Hawkinson. Joe and Gar. 6 4 was the score. I think wow. Daly, Daly turned out, didn't he? Yeah. Go, Sutter. Oh, ball. Oh, good oh, ball. Cam. What a champion. Cam Murray. <laughs> Trent, he's sleeping well Sunday nights after a game. I walked out with his dad the other day after the Roosters game. They're just a positive, tough family. So there's he going. He said, no, he's going good. You know, he's positive about where they are at the moment. And you, know, you can see they really believe it. <laughs> good, good on them. Mm. Good Friday footy. Make sure you catch every last second. Bulldogs versus Rabbitohs. I've got to say, Canterbury were bloody good last week Who against like albeit ordinary opposition. 3 p.m. I like and the three Bulldogs. on nine. I like the Bulldogs. Mm, so do I. I like the Bulldogs. I think... Um, uh, just the confidence of winning and having a good win. They scored some points. They scored them everywhere. There was mm. two tries there, there, and two through the middle. So I think, um, I reckon they'll get them. They, they've shown great commitment to defence, so it wasn't any great surprise that they defended well. They just Early on, find, yeah. They, they couldn't find points in the first two weeks. It'll be interesting, though, because remember, Titans bombed the try. Kieran. Remember, it hit Kieran. Brimson. Brimson. Brimson ran through and threw for someone. It'd be interesting if, that had, if they'd have scored that. 
you know, where the dog's mentality is, you know, when those sort of things happen, when things go against them. So one of the sayings again, you know what they say about your uncle? Could have been your auntie. Could have been <laughs> whatever. I was horny as an old goat. So the name Gaia, really? synonymous with the Penrith Rugby really League Club. Well, there is another generation of Gaia set to debut for Penrith this week. Maverick Gaia knocked back offers from all around the league, including Melbourne, because he wanted to play first grade for Penrith. So there's an excuse to go back into the archives and see just how mad his old man was. <laughs> Twelve weeks now. Twelve. Let me Wait. tell you, like MG, a lot of sp a lot of people when they think about MG, they think about that game and that obviously constantly gets promoted. For two years there, he was the best player in the comp, mm. without doubt. Mate, as in defence, you no one ever shows the attack. Mate, everything, a Skillful. lot of what we did was off the back of him, just you know getting through the big long arms, offloads. Mate, he was. He was the most uh, influential person, I reckon, in the game for a couple of years. So was it true? He was picked in that game pretty much to go in for New South Wales yeah. and do what he did. Yeah. To try and try and bash him up. They said, go out and bash him, and then they suspended him. That's right. <laughs> How's Maverick compared to him? No, Mad? so, Ma you know what? Mav went through a big change because he was a really talented bloke coming through. Great touch footy player. Uh, highly skillful, like MG. Big? Yeah, he's the Big same. as his dad? Oh, maybe not as tall, but... As uh, you know, I'd say even stronger, and you know, had to sort of make you know, Mav like his dad likes to party, but then had to taper his whole ways. You know, changed. You know, got real serious about his footy, and it didn't come as easy. Didn't come as early, so he'll go good. He's a good player. I really like what what he said. In fact, Mark said it. I think on radio yesterday that he could have gone to any number of clubs and would have been an NRL player by now. But he only wanted to play first grade for Penrith. Yeah, and you don't that. hear a lot of that. It, it, no matter the club. Tribalism, that's yeah. the best thing. Watched his dad do it, watched his uncles. Brandy is his uncle. Yeah. And Peter Shields. Yep. No. Yeah. No, they're all related. It's all related, isn't it? Well, Shields it's all one big happy like family. Shields like like Canberra. Canberra's the same. Shields, he married Linda. Yeah. So, oh, I don't know what they, all, what they all call each other, but yeah. They're, uh, he's done good. And you know what? He's come through and he had to make heaps of sacrifices. It didn't come easy. Uh, like you said, he would have had a shot at other clubs. Will Spook be at the game? Spook will be there for sure. Have you met MG's best mate, Spook? No. <laughs> Spook will be there for sure. <laughs> got a on the jobby. Get the jobby on the jobby. <laughs> Get the jo <laughs> I've done a few speaking gigs with MG. And when MG's up on stage speaking, his mate Spook doesn't look. He's just looking around at people <laughs> talking while... Well, MG's talking. Does he? Everyone's talking. He's <laughs> doing. Hey. <laughs> Spooky. Get this jobby. He <laughs> was the best. Very funny. Uh, Freddie in the eighth medal. Who the oh. boys rate on the weekend. Close. Wow, Arpy Coruscant gets three over Nathan. Nathan picked on. Who's that? Been... Gary. No, it's Fatty. He picked oh, the on... fat. Why didn't you answer it? No. Nah. He'd be on the goal. He'd be... Oh, it's Wednesday. He's looking for tips. Ah. Chris Lees' tips. Um, Ed, you go, Appy. Same three players. He had, he had, he had a gastro too leading into that game. Mm. Heaps of players do that, don't they? He you know, a bit injured, a bit crook, but just find a way and then it, things just fall your way. The big moment of this game, which, yeah. which shows the what the Tigers were about, was that 50-50 ball on the ground mm. when him and Nico was going for that 50-50. Where at the time it was probably a 90 10 in the way of Nico, and he just found a way to get the ball. I, th I think that was on the back of it. Yeah. They scored that try in half time. He's such a great player. 
You can they that? springboard off this? We, yeah. We've seen little shoots of positivity over the last few years. For instance, when they flogged North Queensland, what was it, 66 or whatever it was at Leichhardt last year. And I think I'm right in saying they didn't win a game the rest of the year after that. They got flogged after that, I'm pretty yeah. sure. They went, when they went back up to Townsville, they beat them by 70. That's right. Cowboys beat That's them right. by 70. Yeah. So um, what I'm saying is the club needs to, needs to emphasise that that can't be a one-off. Mm. Well done to Benji. I was happy for Yeah, me. that was awesome. It's all, under all sorts of pressure even before a ball was kicked. Yeah, you'll find, you know, they'll back up, I reckon. They'll go again. They've got a good chance this week because Paramiss and Mitchell. Big thing with Mitchell is, mate, he's kick. He kicks the ball 50 oh, yeah. metres and high. No. He kicks it further than that. Mate, he just it's nails 60. it. 60. So every time he gets to his kick, it means you're bringing the ball out off your own line. Mm. Parramatta won't get that leeway. So We've picked the same players, just in a different order. Yes, we did. Well, so did. they'll have a better chance of being in the game. All right, Roosters, Panthers. Now, Panthers won the last eight. They smashed them twice last year. Last eight smashed games. Them. You always talk about the size of the outside backs. I love it. I they wouldn't. It. Okay, so Taruva, Tungor. Who else is there? Uh, Taruva, Tungor, Brian Tottenham. Brian Tottenham. Oh, oh. None Taylor of those May. players would be over 5'10". Edwards. 5'10", yeah. Well, they'd be, yeah. Dominic Young, 6'6". Six, six. Tupo, 6'5". Six, Suwali, 6'4". Six, 6'5". Six, Joseph Marnie, 6'2". Arnie, 6'2". Six, six, two, six, 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 three. It is amazing. The get. contrast in the two teams. Surely but how? Tries, you know what I mean? Well, it's about getting the best out of what you've got. What you'll find is Penrith utilise their little blokes coming out of trouble and getting metres and, you know, working the ball in behind the taller blokes while the Roosters, if they get down there, so be kicking to the... Penrith will be going into this game thinking, keep them under two tries. Keep them under two tries and we can beat them. Hmm... So in each half, you have around 20 sets. Yep. So they're trying to limit them to one try during those 20 well, mate, sets. Well, mate, they need to be complaining. If you look at both teams... Which is 120. Tackles. They're complaining at 80% both teams, which is for this time of year is good. Penrith will need to complete at about 90 to win the game. Just drive them mad and get the ball, get them coming off their own I end. can't see the Roosters being beat. No. Really okay. cannot see the Roosters being beat this one. Broncos, and, Cows. Sorry. sorry. Fisher Harris always already oh, out. But Lindsay Collins is out too. But then Terrell May comes in and see why Wong goes on the bench. The 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 Roosters depth. They got a lot of depth, hmm. haven't they? They're benched this year. Angus. So um, Angus is back. Megan Butcher in the side. White. No. The far who White. No, no, far, he's a, a good player. player. Yeah. He was good last week. Um, he's a weapon. And and no Scott Sorensen. He offers a lot off the bench. I ask Gus. Would you be shocked if Terrell May got an origin start this year? Yeah. You'd be shocked? Yeah. Tyrell, yes. the front rower. Yeah. yeah. Terrell May. Not this year. No way. Well, I'm only asking that because I'm just, I've just been having a little look through. And no, I've South no Wales doubt. aren't blessed with mid He'll be there. He'll be there eventually, but just not this year. Okay. Uh, Friday night, Broncos, Cowboys. The Callaway medal, like we said, to acknowledge a, a late great of the game. Obviously, Brisbane... Knocked around. So Tristan Saylor, we, mm. we've talked about the absence of Reese Walsh, but player, Tristan though, Saylor is the man who comes in uh, at fullback. And while obviously Reese Walsh is, is the gun talent, he's not, not unfamiliar in the way he plays the game. Tristan, or very, is Tristan a yeah, very much like Reese Walsh. He is flighty, fast and skillful. So, yeah, you obviously, uh, you may actually lose the big, uh, having done it in big games, but he is very skillful. Good play. And Sunday footy over in New Zealand, Warriors versus Knights with RTS going back to fullback. Charles hasn't been seen all year. Yes. And uh, to our pick, he's obviously gone because of concussion. Neither team's really hit its strap so far this year. You know year. what? Even just looking at the lineups, when I got on my little phone and looked at the lineups this morning, just seeing Kalen at fullback and Roger Pretty good, excited eh? me. That's, it's going to be a good game. And they are... Uh... You've got the Safudi boys uh, playing front row together. Jesus, disappointing Leo Thompson was suspended. Yeah. They are a fiery... He's going back. What did he get? He got one week. I got a week. Fiery crowd in New Zealand. Some Rayleigh's scary back. Scary dudes. This is in Auckland, yeah? Yep. When we go on there in winter, and a lot of the Kiwi, the bigger Kiwi boys in the fan, they'd, they'd, they'd have gum boots on. Mm. They wear gum boots. 
Well, one gentleman who just won't be wearing gum weed. boots. You can just smell weed throughout the whole the ground. Is that why you got three daily end points every time you play there? <laughs> one gentleman who won't be wearing gum boots is a gentleman by the name of Jake Watts, who is from Newcastle. He has shown us his new tattoo. Oh, he's sorry. Jake's the tattoo artist. This is what he has just emblazoned on someone's calf. My sister sent this to me. It's pretty. It's very it's good. Pretty cool. Really. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, there's always like the odd wag there. on social media. You look wag. like a rascal. That looks. That's, that is. A, that is a perfect likeness. And here's the social media comment to go with it. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, yeah. So Jake Watts, sorry, Jake, Jake Watts is our so tattoo nice. artist. If you if you want an Andrew Johns or a Brad Fittler tat anywhere on your body, Jake Watts up in Newy's. Someone would like to go and see. Someone up there in Newy's got on his hamstring the picture of the iconic one of the skateboarding. Skateboard. Oh, if you've got a rugby league, ta we've done this before, I think. If you've got a rugby league tattoo on an appropriate part of your body, which part was that? Was that on his calf? Foot? That was on his calf. Yeah. Well done. That would hurt. Where's the the sorest part to get a tattoo for me was here. Mm. That hurts. See you at the footy over the weekend and uh, please bring chocolate eggs. No meat on Friday. No meat on Friday. No meat. And go home and read the Bible. What about the vegan meat? They, the fake. It's not real eat, meat. Fake and bacon. Look forward to your company on Friday the 8th next week. Ta da! This year, NRL on 9 is your one stop shop for all footy. That's right, Freddie. Not about the highlights, action, seven days a week. Billy and Gus podcast, get that on your drive on the way home. Immortal behaviour, grab a seat on the couch for that. And of course, my favourite, Fred in the Oak. The best footy brains, the biggest games. Don't trust the algorithm, subscribe to NRL on 9 and get all your entertainment there.